suitability uh, modeling tool that we've been building in ArcGIS Pro. Suitability modeling, that is really raster weighted overlay modeling, uh, has been you know, advancing for 50 years. Um, and so this is one of our latest uh, applications that make it very simple. So Yun, you want to take it and show? Yeah, we'll do. Since Jack already kind of covered what suitability modeling actually is, I'll just go right into our study area, which is Hawaii. Today, we'll be looking at coffee farms. Coffee happens to be the second most harvested crop in Hawaii and is expected to continuously grow during the next decade. So for coffee farmers, finding the next suitable land for coffee production in a sustainable way is a problem for them. So to tackle this problem, we can start by clicking on the suitability modeler and adding a few data layers that we'll like to analyze. The layers that I'll be using range from land cover, slope, aspect, terrain, all the way to temperature, precipitation, distance to road. And all of these data layers are either from the Living Atlas of the World or Hawaii's OpenGIS portal, which is also built on top of ArcGIS Online. So once all of these layers are loaded, we can select any of these and start our analysis. In this case, we'll start with land cover. As I click on the layer, the transformation pane opens and it shows us a few more information. This is the distribution of all the pixels for land cover. And this is the distribution histogram of the suitability score for this layer. It automatically recognizes that land cover is categorical data and allows me to change the field. We can change it to class name and start changing the values. Obviously, we want to lower the score for developed areas and increase the score for areas such as cultivated crops. Ewan, how big of a raster are you playing with right now? Right now, this is 30 meter pixels. And the entire size, probably not that big. I will. Don't worry, on. I just was curious. Okay. And looking at this land cover layer, we can see that this area covered in gray is actually barren land. So we'll change the suitability for this area once more. And we can see the changes applied, colored in red, which is the lowest suitability score. Before moving on, we'll add a second map and click on slope. So we can see the overall suitability score or the overall suitability model on the left map. And the slope layer that we just selected on the right. For slope, we want to target low slope areas. And in order to achieve this, we can use built-in functions. In this case, I'll use linear and inverted to get the suitability score that I want, which is low slope areas with high suitability scores. And next, we'll add one more layer, precipitation. And for precipitation, we want to target around 13 millimeters of annual precipitation. So minimizing the areas that are too dry or too wet. Again, we can use the built-in functions. In this case, I'll use the Gaussian function and change the midpoint to 1300. And now you can see both the layer and the histogram has been updated. At any point in time, you can also change the actual weight of the model itself. So here you can see every layer has a weight. And for our model, we want to have a higher score for precipitation. You can change the value and have the model updated. Before moving on, I will close some of these windows. And in the same manner, we can continue to add and analyze more layers, such as air temperature, dominant soil type, and pH level to create our final suitability model that looks like this. 
from this final suitability model, we can actually use the locate tool and find the best suitable 40 acres of land divided into two regions. Once we run the tool, it will take us to this area, which happens to be owned by a private ranching company at the moment. As you can see, the suitability modeler is a true end-to-end -end experience from analyzing your data to find the best suitable area that you need. And it is definitely a game changer compared to the previous workflow of chaining multiple raster functions over and over again. It is very unique, convenient, and fast. And this uh, behaves lin linearly so that as you scale it up in terms of size, you're not getting an exponential uh, issue. So our raster functions have hundreds of analytic tools built into them. Some of you know about them. Uh, what we've been doing is putting the same uh, logic into a raster modeling library that runs in the cloud uh, with enormous sizes. Uh, we're talking about hundreds of millions of rasters uh, so that you can access it not through the desktop but through browsers uh, building these uh, uh, Python notebook-based uh, analytic uh, scripted models that can give you fast visualization at scale. Mm -hmm.